Hi, I'm Laura, the leader of the success team at Live School. Today, I want to talk to you about setting up your Live School point system. Let's dive in. When setting up your point system in Live School, the first thing to consider is the type of behaviors you want to track. Do you want to focus on positive behaviors to promote positivity in your school? Or do you want to track both positive and negative behaviors with students receiving merits and demerits? If you choose to track both merits and demerits, there's another question to answer. Do you want to subtract demerits from students' total bank accounts? One option is to have students receive merits and demerits without any points being deducted. This approach gives students a chance to redirect or account for their mistakes without being penalized. The other option is to subtract demerits. This means that when a student receives a demerit, a specific number of points will be deducted from their overall bank account balance. So if you had set a reward that required a certain number of points, that student would have fewer points toward that reward due to the demerits that they received. Another important aspect of your Life School point system is the number of points you expect your teachers to give each week. Setting clear expectations helps ensure consistency among your teachers. If there's a significant disparity in the number of points given by teachers, it can disrupt your token economy. To address this, we recommend using a per week gauge. That allows teachers to track their progress towards a midpoint each week using their teacher dashboard. On average, most teachers in Live School give about 250 points per week or 50 points per day, but the actual number of points depends on what you're rewarding. For example, if you reward students for being present and on time every day, you might give slightly more points each week since students earn at least one of those points every day. On the other hand, if you only reward students for going above and beyond, you might give fewer points each week as it's less likely for a student to earn a point every day. A good rule of thumb is to consider the number of students that your teachers see every day and then decide whether they should give one, more than one, or fewer than one point to every student each day. Multiply that by your number of students, the number of points, five days a week, and you've got the estimate of the total number of points that you think your teacher should give every week. Once you've defined your point system, including all the behaviors you want to track, whether or not you'll subtract demerits, and the number of points teachers should give, it's time to create your rubric. The rubric serves as an easy to follow roadmap that guides your students towards their desired behaviors. It consists of two parts, categories and behaviors. Categories group the behaviors into similar sections. You could choose categories based on your values, based on locations, based on grade level, or any other relevant grouping. And feel free to mix and match categories to capture different trends and patterns. The second part of your rubric are the behaviors themselves. Behaviors are the actions that you want teachers to identify in your students so that you can assign a positive or negative point throughout the school day. Each behavior should explain that reasoning behind a corresponding rule that you have in your school. For instance, instead of saying something like no running in the hallway, you could frame it positively as walking in the hallways earns a point under the category building a safe space. It's important to frame those behaviors positively so you can allow your students to focus on the positive elements. You wanna encourage your teachers and all of the staff in your school to really suggest behaviors that are gonna emphasize those positive actions like transitioning safely and engaging in classroom discussions appropriately or raising their hands. A couple of key tips to keep in mind while you're setting up your rubric. First, you can use numbers to order all those categories and behaviors alphanumerically. So if you want a specific item to appear in a certain order, add a number in the front to ensure that they're displayed as you intend. You can also create categories that are tailored for specific staff members, like just your admin team. Every teacher can then show or hide those relevant categories based on their focus area. This approach allows you to manage longer rubrics by having your teachers concentrate on just specific categories for a certain period of time. Also, take advantage of all the example behavior rubrics that we have available in Live School. You can use filters to find rubrics grouped by values, locations, using school acronyms, the three R's, and all kinds of ideas. All those examples will help you build your rubric effectively. Thanks for learning more about point systems in Live School. If you have any questions, reach out to us at support at liveschoolinc.com. We're here to help.